What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Get Paid for Your Pad, episode number 472. And today I'm super excited um, because I'm joined by Matt Bennett, the co-founder of Peerspace. And if you haven't heard about Peerspace, they are essentially Airbnb for events. Uh, I hope I say that right. I'm sure uh, Matt will be able to uh, to explain uh, in more details. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Jasper. Absolutely, I'm uh, I'm excited to uh, to dive into this. We we were just talking. It turns out uh, you live two blocks away from my business partner Eric, um, <laughs> which is re- which is really funny. So uh, that's a uh, it's such a cool area, Lacadia, uh, just north of San Diego. Yeah, de- definitely. And I was this weekend. I was actually on Peer Space looking to see what inventory we had over here, and was really surprised to see that um, there's quite a few spaces popping up even in the suburbs of san diego county so uh yeah yeah Yeah, i was actually just looking at the website too uh because i was imagining um that i was in lucadia and i was imagining like let's say we want to do like a company offsite and we Mm want to rent a space for you know like let's say like three to six hours um, and so I, I actually looked at the Lucadia as well, and I found a modern beachy farmhouse uh, hosted by Ryan. I'm not sure if you you might know him. I don't know, I but don't um, know. but yeah, he's got an amazing, really amazing home. I don't know how many bedrooms it is because you know this is for events, so um, the yeah. bedrooms are aren't really that relevant. But it's more about the the space. So. He has a couple big dining tables and a nice outside area. And looks like I was looking at the reviews and it looks like um, a lot of people, a lot of his previous guests have actually used it for either company offsites or photo shoots. So, so yeah, um, it's interesting to see. And he's charging $275 per hour, you know, not per night, but per hour, uh, right. which, you know, which is, that's a, that's a pretty good, uh, some good earnings uh, potential there, but, um, but yeah, we'll dive into that, but uh, you know, let's just start off with what is Peerspace? Yeah, definitely. So Peerspace is a marketplace that allows you to rent your creative space. It could be uh, many different kinds of spaces, a residence, a loft space, an art gallery, a small business commercial space. Um, but you can rent this by the hour, as you mentioned, um, for all sorts of activities, meetings, events, productions, um, and as you mentioned with your with the case you brought up, a lot of companies, that, especially ones that are working remote these days, um, will use a space for team building, for strategy sessions, for uh, a real retreat or offsite. Um, so, so yeah, thousands of photo and film shoots, baby showers, corporate offsites, and more—they're all taking place on Peer Space every week. Um, in Homes, lofts, studios, event halls, offices, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Is this uh, is it U.S. only or is it, is it worldwide? Uh, no, or it, it's we're going global. Um, not every market is open. Uh, we want to make sure when we open a market that we do so the right way. Um, but last year we launched in Canada, um, particularly in in Toronto and Vancouver, um, and in London. And we are just about to get underway in both Sydney, Australia and Paris. So right. um, expect those markets to open and many more um, to come this year and into next year as well. Gotcha. Okay. What's, uh, what, are, what are like the most popular events? You mentioned, I think, photo shoots and meetings and company offsites. What are some of our types? Yeah, so... Um, we tend to think kind of three different types of space uh, of space use. There's meetings, events, and productions. But within each of those verticals, we call them, there's so many activities. Um, and we really like to think of peer space as the destination for any activity that happens outside the home or office. So, um, you know, within events, certain spaces, of course, are not going to be good for certain types of events but you've got everything from a small birthday party to a baby shower to an engagement um, or, a, or a DIY edding, wedding even um, to the larger corporate events and holiday parties um, in some of our larger event venues. Um, in production, it's a lot of film and photography, but that can run the gamut from a small photo shoot for an Instagrammer or YouTuber 
uh, to uh, a Netflix production um, or you know something on ABC News where they're interviewing uh, somebody for a piece. Um, and then of course with meetings or what we call offsites, this would be anything from a, a day or two day company office retreat um, to board meetings, to meeting with a client. We have lots of therapists even that book spaces for their clients so they don't have to rent their own office space. Um, so yeah, we built a really flexible marketplace for many different space uses. And we've also encouraged our hosts to think um, outside the box of how their space, um, can, what it can be used and monetized for. Um, of course, again, not all activities are gonna be suitable for every space type. There's um, definitely like laws in place around certain activities. You don't wanna be throwing like a 500 person event uh, in a residence. Um, but, you know, there are certain types of activities um, that are really well suited um, and particularly for residences, uh, the good ones for that are like smaller photo shoots and productions as well as uh, meetings do well. Yeah. You know, I, I've actually rented an Airbnb multiple times uh, with the for, as a as an office. So I wouldn't sleep there. I would just rent it as an office because I just was, I would stay at a hotel or something and I was looking for a place to work or I was staying at a Airbnb with a lot of friends and then it was too loud for me to work there. So I would just rent like a tiny little Airbnb down the road just to just to work there, you know? Um, so I could definitely, I could definitely see how there, how there's, you know, a lot of, would be a lot of demand, especially, and I'm assuming during the pandemic, I'd love to hear from you, but during the pandemic, like a lot of people started uh, working remotely, as you mentioned. Last week, the CEO of Airbnb, Brian Chesky, actually announced that the entire Airbnb staff can can start living remotely um, yeah. this year and uh, within the country, and then starting September, even worldwide, um, which is which is incredible. And um, I think there's going to be more more businesses that will will follow. Um, so is there, has, have you seen demand increase a lot during the, during the COVID? Yeah, well, of course, initially, uh, when we weren't really sure what was going to happen with the pandemic, we saw a big retreat in bookings, um, as most industries saw, but especially a platform that's built to bring people together in real life. Um, that was pretty difficult, uh, but we did see a very resurgent business um, in in some of the areas that you're mentioning, like uh, people who who need a place to be productive, and it might be maybe it's more difficult for them to do that without access to some kind of flexible office space solution, um, or teams that need to come together uh, in a safer manner. So we saw lots of bookings happening where like teams would meet um, in a backyard patio or you know somewhere outside where there was good airflow. Uh, but be able to see each other again after several months of having to, to work remotely from their house. Uh, we also saw a lot of production. So um, as you can imagine, when everybody's at home, can't go to the movies, you can't be together, there's, there's this insatiable need to consume content. And there was a lot of content creators. Uh, and I'm talking about anybody from you know, influencers or those who have a large social following that are creating their own grassroots content uh, to... Uh, marketing teams from corporate brands that needed to produce uh, in, uh, content for their products um, to the larger scale production. So we saw a, a lot of that as well. Mm. Uh, and, you know, we, we've, we've, we're in a much different place than we were prior to the pandemic. The business is much busier overall. Uh, there's been a lot more new guests coming to use PeerSpace as well as a lot more hosts joining the platform. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now let's talk about, let's talk about um, how Airbnb hosts, you know, cause those are the, the people that are listening to this podcast. They're usually hosting on Airbnb. Um, can, can you combine PeerSpace with Airbnb? Cause that was kind of the first thought that came to my mind when I looked at PeerSpace, I was like, Oh, if, you know, if I have like a couple days uh in the calendar that are not filling up instead of renting it out overnight i could you know i could list on peer space and 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 fill up my my empty dates so my question i guess is are most peer space users either are, are exclusively on peer space or do a lot of them combine it with airbnb hosting yeah that's a really good question um and it really depends on what the air what the airbnb or, or short-term rental hosts goals are 
um, for their space. If they want to maximize utility, meaning they want to fill their occupancy as much as possible. I mean, we've seen hosts that are really uh, enterprising have peer space bookings in the hours in between the turnover from two Airbnb bookings, uh, which is oh, wow. which is wild. But you know, some hosts are doing it. They're they're really operating this as a full you know time business, uh, and they're trying to get to one hundred percent occupancy. Um, but that what I would say is, yeah, I think for for Airbnb hosts, and we have quite a few um, hosts on the platform that do this. Uh, it's really meant to fill in gaps where there are there is a lull in availability. Um, a lot of hosts tell us that are on Airbnb that they're usually occupied on the weekends, but during the week is when they see a drop in, in occupancy. And for peer space, since most of these activities are commercial in nature, it's actually a great time to be booked. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be less production happening on a Saturday and Sunday than there will on like a you know Tuesday through Thursday. Um, yeah. So it kind of works in a, in a, in a pretty uh, serendipitous way. Um, and then, of course, there are hosts that start out using Airbnb and they start to realize that the income that they can generate for hourly bookings can offset what it costs for a nightly rental. So some will decide to kind of take it all the way over to uh, a full time peer space business. But we certainly um, are trying to be we want this platform to be flexible um, and we want it to work with Airbnb, Airbnb hosts um, the ways that they're they're used to working. Um, yeah, you know, because we don't do overnight accommodation. These are daytime activities for the most part. You don't sleep in the space. Uh, we are not short term rental from that perspective. This is really a license to use or share the space. So it operates a little bit differently than how Airbnb uh, would work, but. Um, if you're if you're able to manage your spaces and your calendars effectively, you can you can do both uh, at the same time. Either by carving out certain days of the week, or you know just staying on top of your calendar to know when you have um, you know a vacancy so that it can be booked on peer space. And then lastly, I would say we were we are working on more tools to make that even easier for hosts, so there's less active management involved. Um, but the ones that are really successful, I think, are the ones that are putting in just a little bit more effort to make sure that all goes well. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of like the first concern that came to my mind when I was thinking about doing Airbnb and Pearspace at the same time is like, how do we prevent uh, double bookings? Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm what I'm thinking is like, would you are you guys connected to any PMSs, any property management softwares? Yeah, a great question. We're not currently. Um, we definitely uh it's on our radar um and we are also we do have a calendar syncing tool um on peer space that can connect with a google calendar um and we're working on more calendar connection functionality so short of full integration with a pms uh, we will be making that kind of stuff easier to than it is today mm -hmm. um you know kind of take one step at a time the thing with these PMSs is they're all set up for the same use. And like I said, peer space, um, same construct of hosts and guests, you know, you're renting space, but some of the nuances about it being hourly or for activities that are not for hotel, you know, stay um, for all intents and purposes, just require a little bit more of a deeper level of integration. Uh, and that's something that we're, we're very excited to get to. Um, and it's yeah. definitely on our radar because we are seeing a lot of, like you are, a lot of people who are familiar with short-term rental and are hosts on these platforms asking about how they can, you know, get involved on peer space and how they can make it fit into their work stream better. Yeah. Now there's also, you mentioned like a lot of, a lot of times, like you, you see as an Airbnb host, you see a lot of demand on the weekends and, and less demand during the week, but we also have a lot of hosts who are in seasonal markets. So they make a lot of money, like let's say April to October, but then the winter comes, for example, in, you know, in Canada, we see this a lot winter comes and it's really cold. And so there's, there's, uh, there's fewer visitors, um, but peer space, I guess is not so much focused on visitors. So do you see, do you see hosts who are like renting out during the summer on Airbnb and then using peer space in the winter? 
That's a great distinction that you're making. I don't, I haven't looked specifically at that, that to see, you know, this Airbnb host operates like this um, for their Airbnb business and like this for their peer space business. Um, but, you know, there's a difference in the core clientele of who your guest is on peer space. Don't get me wrong. We have thousands of guests who book in cities all over the country and, you know, soon to be all over the world um, because there's so much variety uh, and they need variety for the types of work that they're doing in these spaces. Um, but there's a lot of people who are booking within their home market and they're, and they're doing it, you know, again, for different purposes, for meetings, for, for a production. Uh, and so, um, I think that's important for, for hosts to think about and realize. And, and there's certainly, if you're in a market where, yeah, the, when the weather turns bad, um, your vacation rental business goes down, but you live in a thriving metropolis, like let's just take, I don't know, Minneapolis as an example, it gets really cold there in the winter. Um, that doesn't mean photo shoots end or, or that people don't need to meet. Uh, and so I would guess that, um, it's a, you know, we're seeing hosts that are able to be flexible with the bookings that they're taking uh, based around seasonality. Yeah. Cause is there, is there, is there any seasonality on, on peer space? Do you see like, you know, different seasons, you see different type of events or demand mm -hmm. uh, variations? Totally. I think it, um, it's what you would expect, particularly for events. Uh, you're going to see a little bit of a lull early on in the year. Um, after the holidays are over. Um, and then springtime right now, we're seeing kind of more things happening, kids' birthday parties, backyard uh, types of parties and um, smaller events and smaller weddings are starting to come back into, you know, some of our venues that we have. Um, and so you might see a little bit of seasonality in that regard. If your space is set up flexibly, um, meaning you can create a you can create three listings from your space that you can merchandise differently so you can have your photo production studio version of your space that has different photos um, has different description and has different pricing right you can have the same thing you got a separate one for events and another one for meetings if you're set up to fully maximize your space and it's really um, suitable for multiple uses um, then the seasonality really starts to balance each itself mm -hmm. out. So when events go down, you might see a rise in meetings. But generally, I would say, yeah, like things will calm down right around the holidays when everybody is kind of focusing on things other than work. Um, and they usually come back uh, pretty, pretty strongly in the first quarter of the year. Um, summer, depending on the activity, you might see a rise in some activities. You might see a fall in others as people go on vacation. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is a little bit of a different type of uh, thing than, you know, the, the peak travel times, I would, I would say. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you can create multiple listings with, uh, with one space. Um, so go, going back to the, the seasonality, um, <clears throat> you know, another thing that we see Airbnb hosts do a lot in, in cities, like, like you mentioned, many, Minneapolis is they'll rent out like, let's say April to, uh, to September on Airbnb. And then they rent out the rest from the, the rest of the year. They, uh, rent out uh, long-term to like a student or something, or, or, you know, construction worker, or, uh, you know, somebody who was working in the in medical field. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, you know, for what do people have to think if there's people listening now and thinking like, hey, maybe I should I should try spear space. Um, what are some things that that person would have to keep in mind? For example, like, is it do you have to prepare the home differently? And what what types of homes are most in demand? Yeah. Uh, in terms of what a host would need to consider uh, when they're when they're trying to set up a peer space listing is. Yeah, how, how often do you want to be booked? How much, what are your revenue goals? Um, and, you know, based on that, you can set up your listings accordingly to attract the type of activities that you want to get. So if you're a very high-end home and you really are just looking for one booking every once in a while, um, but you want it to be a professional film shoot or something like that, um, you're probably going to price your space a little higher. Um, you're going to show off kind of the luxury 
aspects of the home um, or, you know, the view from the home, the just kind of how pristine it all feels. Um, if you want to be booked more frequently, um, you know, you're looking for those kind of midweek bookings, you're probably going to price yourself a bit lower and you're also going to merchandise your listings uh, accordingly. When I say a bit lower, I don't mean like $20 an hour. You can, you can price it at that price if you'd like, but um, you know, there's, there's a whole range depending on, on what you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as far as what homes perform best, um, I don't know that there's like one true, um, you know, type of, type of residence um, that works better than others. I think if you're trying to host meetings, you should make sure you have a space, probably your living room or something that feels comfortable for people to um, be, be relaxed with each other and work, but also has, you know, tethers into some AV component. You know, people want to share slides with each other or they want to watch a video on a screen. So um, having a, you know, small setup um, is better than not having kind of any of the amenities needed to make sure that the people who are booking your space are, are going to be productive there. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot different with a with a production because they're really looking at your space as a location, as a backdrop for what they're going to do in it. Um, but yeah, as you get to meetings, um, that's one thing. Uh, if you're doing events like a you know kid's birthday party, you want to like probably highlight certain areas of your backyard and kind of explain, you know, how um, well suited it is for entertaining. What what is what is kind of the average price that people charge per hour? Yeah, like I said, it can range. I mean, you can go from like 20, 25 bucks an hour. Um, you know, if you've got your space set up as a as a photo studio, you got a simple backdrop. Photographers are just coming in, you know, and you can really do high volume, but but turn the space around quickly. Um, really nice houses that are being used as film locations can be, you know, five hundred dollars an hour and up. Like I said, they probably don't get booked as much. There's a certain kind of client that's looking for that space, um, but it's really up to you. Uh, we recommend that our hosts take a look at uh, the pricing relative to other spaces around them, uh, particularly spaces that uh, are similar to their own, to set it a set a benchmark or to maybe figure out what the starting point is. It's always good. I'm sure it works similarly on Airbnb. You want to get your first five-star booking. So you might come in a little bit lower and then gradually rise to a price that you feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with. And that's what we see a lot of hosts doing. Yeah. Do you need to be there in person for the check-in? Yeah, very good distinction uh, to make also for peer space. But again, we're not, um, this is not a sublease. This is not a, um, like a hotel where you're actually, inviting transient occupancy into your living space. Um, you're really kind of sharing the space, you're giving the guest a license to use it um, while, you know, potentially while you're there. So um, we do ask that our hosts provide some type of supervision that is suitable to um, the activity that's being booked. I think it's, it's good from a safety standpoint. Um, it's good for a hospitality and a, a level of attentive, attentiveness. It doesn't necessarily need to be you, the host yourself. Um, it could be a site rep. It could be um, your property manager. Uh, but it's a little bit different uh, in that respect. Um, but again, like you could be home um, while somebody's using your backyard and, and you're still able to, to live your life and carry on um, and I'll also be there to kind of show them, here's how the space is laid out. Here's where you can get this. Here's the, where the bathroom is. Um, some hosts did have other ways to kind of set up their space. I've, I, I was in a photography studio um, in Brooklyn a couple of weeks ago, and the hosts made really effective use of QR codes everywhere um, where you could scan the QR code and then get a YouTube video that they were, had recorded on. Here's how this thing works, and here's where the lighting is, and here's the Wi-Fi. Um, so you can make it more turnkey, absolutely. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend those certain use types where, you know, you're having, uh, letting somebody rent um, for a party uh, and you're not planning to be there at all. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's just from a, a safety standpoint, um, not advisable. Um, not that there's high risk. It's just, 
you should be protective of your own space and your um, and attentive to your guests too who are going to have needs and 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 questions. Yeah, got it. What about the cleaning? I'm I'm imagining the cleaning is not as intense as it will be for a overnight stay as you don't have to, you don't have to make the beds and, you know, mm. do the laundry. Like, is, is there a cleaning fee on, on pay space at all? We, so you can set a cleaning fee. You can also say that the cleaning fee is included in the price of the space. Um, but it, it can be broken out if you'd like. Uh, and that money goes to you as the host to reimburse you for cleaning costs or to, you know, hire a, a cleaning service. Um, I, I would agree with you that most bookings tend to be more lightweight on the cleaning um, than, yeah, having to change sheets and do laundry and, you know, all the inconveniences that might come with giving up your living space so somebody else can use it for the same purpose. Um, so, yeah, the cleaning could be, you know, doing the dishes or, you know, sweeping and vacuuming. Um, if it's, you know, a, a production, there could be different kinds of things that you're cleaning for. So, um, it varies, but we do have the same functionality to allow you mm -hmm. to recoup on any costs associated with, uh, the cleaning of the space. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of similarities with Airbnb, uh, which what I noticed, uh, you know, kind of looking around at the, at the website, it's free to sign up. Uh, you guys take 15% of the, of the booking, correct? Which right. Is, yeah. You know, similar, similar as Airbnb. Um, you work with reviews and you have the uh, insurance, like the, the host guarantee, or I guess the, the peer guarantee. I don't know what you call yeah, it. We have a, we have a, it's, it's actually insurance, peer space host insurance. Um, it's a $1 million general liability policy. Um, it's supplemental, meaning it needs, uh, we do ask that our hosts are, have a primary coverage in place to protect themselves, obviously. Um, but this is meant to step in, you know, and it's meant to give peace of mind um, mm -hmm. from anything that a host could potentially be uh, claimed to be liable for um, from a third party, you know, a guest or an attendee or something. Uh, we want to make sure that our hosts have peace of mind. Um, you know, all hosts should be informed and aware of what they're what they're doing, what they're signing up for um, with any like you would with any uh, marketplace or any service you sign up for. Um, but we want to make sure that we have our host back too. Um, and that's what that, um, service is for. Um, and then we have a bunch of other different kind of value adds and things that are included with the service fee. Uh, of course we, we are spending millions of dollars marketing the platform at all times and bringing, uh, new eyeballs in. And I think we do a really good job of aggregating the demand for these kinds of activities and bringing them um, to a localized search for you, the space owner, so you don't have to do your own marketing in that way. But, you know, on top of just a, a, of those costs, I think there's a lot of other things like the insurance and the, the um, different features that we allow um, you to use uh, to get more bookings, earn more revenue. Um, one, one feature I would um, highlight is, is the concept of add-ons. So if you have premium amenities in your space, um, you can have those bought a la carte, essentially, in addition to um, the space itself. So some hosts decide to make everything all inclusive, everything you, you know, when you book the space, here's everything that comes with it. Others would might say like, oh, we have, you know, this lighting rig over here, or um, we have on-site catering service. And so we'll provide, you know, food for you or, you know, other, a, a site wrap or other kinds of things that they might charge a fee for. Um, you can include that on your listing and the guests can book that from you when they're booking your space. I'm, I'm looking at all the different types of events and there's some, some pretty interesting ones like um, a marriage proposal. <laughs> do people do that? Oh, yeah. Like they, they, they rent a house to propose all, to their... All the time. Um, I just saw last week, I was on YouTube and I saw somebody uh, who was doing a review of how they use Airbnb. It was a host. Um, and after the booking, they interviewed the guest and they said, how was the experience? What did you think? And, and this guy was doing a proposal um, and it was like a surprise, you know, proposal where his friends got uh, his soon to be fiance to, you know, show up at the space. And there was kind of roses and lighting and everything. 
And um, honestly, those kinds of things are what brings me a lot of joy. It makes me excited and happy about what we built at Peer Space, um, that we can facilitate these memorable moments for people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of Airbnb in the same way that they allow the traveler to feel like they can belong anywhere, like locally and, and feel, live like a local and a cool part of town in some country they've never been to before. The magic for us is when people come together with a great idea and it gets facilitated because they've entered this really cool space um, or they've, you know, they, they've just brought all the components together. And so every day, every booking, there's like a story from, from that booking. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's kind of that, that intrinsic thing beyond making money itself that a host can be proud of that they were able to facilitate. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, some other interesting ones, awards, ceremony. I see uh, interview, um, interviews, auditions, planning session, brainstorm session. There's so many, there's so many different type of events uh, listed on here. Like it's, it's pretty interesting to kind of go through the list and, and see, you know, how many types of, well, how many reasons there are for people to need a space, essentially, how many different right. reasons there could be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Peer Space as a company, um, we spent a week together in New York and Brooklyn, uh, in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Um, and we must have booked like 12 different spaces um, for all kinds of activities while we were there. You know, granted, this is a mix of commercial real estate, residential, et cetera. Um, but from like a casual team meeting to like a brainstorm, to, you know, we had a happy hour on a rooftop. We had uh, a large catered dinner party in a venue uh, down in Midtown. And so it, it was just really cool to bring a whole week of events together um, with 80 plus people uh, using, using the platform um, in a series of, you know, hourly bookings. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we try to, um, to, to encourage people to check peer space out for different types of activities. A lot of people anecdotally will say, Hey, I, I first heard about peer space, um, when I attended my company's team offsite. And then a few months later, I booked it for my baby shower that I'm having or something like yeah. that. And so, uh, we love to see that of course. Um, and we want to be known, like I said earlier, as the destination for any activity that you're planning. Um, yeah. that there's a, there's a right space for you, um, for your activity. Just to, uh, to wrap this up, um, are there, is there anything else like a host Airbnb host should know if they're, if they're thinking about, you know, potentially using, using peer space, anything that we haven't covered, yeah. we've covered I mean, quite a bit. For sure. I, and there's always more to cover, but uh, I think that, um, it can be a really good, revenue stream for folks that understand what an online platform does in terms of facilitating reservations on a kind of peer to peer level. Um, you already have a leg up if you know how to use Airbnb um, on our platform. And it's and it's really early days too. We are, uh, we have aspirations to be a globally recognized business, but we're really in this growth phase right now. And so the hosts that are joining now that are um, invested in it and also thinking of it as an opportunity they will kind of grow their way into um, and are kind of patient around how to utilize it, um, they will be very successful. Um, our, our platform just sort of rewards those who do good on it um, because we want to create a really high quality experience for all of our users. Um, so I just say that to say that, you know, number one, if you, if you use Airbnb or you use a short-term rental platform, you'll understand the basics of how a lot of things work on peer space. Um, so you only really need to make yourself aware of what the nuances and differences are about our platform. Um, you'll start getting kind of bookings and, you know, go from there. And, and it's a really good time. Like if you're in the suburbs, like I am in, in San Diego, you're starting to see these spaces popping up for the first time versus, you know, becoming a brand new entrant to Airbnb at this stage where there's just hundreds of thousands of this <laughs> yeah. area. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I'd leave with that. Um, if, if your audience, um, is Airbnb hosts or kind of understands, um, that world, um, it's worth giving us a, a, a try and, 
kind of thinking about how it can work for your business. And there's so many different paths uh, to take there to, to become successful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely cool to, to be kind of like a, a first adopter of a new platform. Um, because uh, I remember when, when I joined Airbnb in 2011, it was just, it was very easy to get in touch with, you know, with the company and get support and stuff. I remember in 2014, there was the, the Airbnb open in San Francisco and there was a couple hundred hosts and then, you know, Brian Chesky was right there as I like, hanging out with everybody. And it was, it was super fun. Um, and now they're such a big company. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very different. So uh, I can totally, right. totally agree with that. It's always cool to, to join a new movement uh, early on. Yeah. And um, uh, we, we pride our team too. We have an amazing customer experience team um, that, you know, is available and meant to help answer host questions and, You know, we know that the product we have today is is still on a journey uh, to becoming the best possible product we have. And so we really try to fill in those gaps by being attentive and, and being a team that's approachable. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right on. So uh, for the people that are listening and they want to give uh, Peer Space a try, like how what's the process and where, where should they go? Yeah, so you can sign up um, for an account on peerspace.com um, right up at the top of the page you'll see a call out to become a host or to list your space and um, kind of get more information around what that entails. But it's a very similar process. You start uh, listing details about your space. Um, if you have questions, you can always reach out to our customer experience team and they can guide you um, through it. But we just encourage hosts to get started um, by listing their space they'll go through a, a short onboarding process where we will where we will review and approve it um, and that's an opportunity too to ask questions about hey should i do this should i do it like this or like this uh, we have community forums they can sign up on where they can ask other hosts about tips and tricks um, yeah so the best thing to do is just get started you know uh, i i don't think it's in very complicated um, there's a lot of material online where you can research uh, the do's and don'ts and, um, yeah, go from there. Awesome. Well, Matt, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, super, super interesting. Um, I'm really curious to see like, cause how many, how many years have you guys existed now? Yeah, we launched in 2014. Um, so we're going on our, our, our seventh year. Um, COVID was like a blur. So I, I don't count those years. <laughs> we're probably like on our fifth year of, of real uh, growth here, but, um, But yeah, we, uh, we've been around for a while. We launched it in San Francisco initially. Um, and then, you know, 40 plus markets uh, in the US and, and now around the globe. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, uh, good luck with everything. And uh, if I end up uh, moving to uh, Encinitas or Lucadia, then I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll grab a beer sometime. That's right. Um, but yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. And to the listeners, thank you for listening. Of course, Friday, Eric and I will be back with an episode of SCR Conversations. So we'll see you then.